What you know about Tycho, bruh? Hey, Bohemians, Julian here for D News. People who have been following this show for a while know that we like science, but there would be no science without scientists, and some of them have been truly remarkable characters. Today, I'd like to profile a personal favorite of mine, a man with a larger-than-life personality whose work changed how we view the heavens, and yet, you've probably never heard of him. A man named Tycho Brahe. Brahe lived a remarkable life and is remembered as one of the early pioneers of astronomy. He observed the stars in the finest detail possible before the invention of the telescope and invented his own instruments to measure the movement of celestial bodies, making his measurements accurate to as much as 1 120th of a degree when his contemporaries were at best within a quarter of a degree. His accounts of a particular supernova were so detailed we now call it Tycho's supernova. His observations debunked the idea that stars were unchanging, and his later study of a comet quashed the notion that planets were stuck on heavenly spheres. Bra dedicated himself to the stars and studied them every night, when he wasn't partying in a more epic fashion than you could hope to duplicate. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start at the beginning. Born to Danish nobility in 1546, Tycho, or Tycho, Bra, or Brahe, was raised by his uncle Jorn Bra after Jorn straight up stole a two-year-old Tycho. Jorn died after saving King Frederick II of Denmark from drowning because nothing about this family is average. He left some of his substantial wealth to his adopted slash kidnapped son, who by this point was 18 and had developed an interest in the sciences. Actually, interest probably isn't a strong enough word. He was so passionate that at age 20, Bra actually lost a chunk of his nose in a duel over math. This was before the peer review process, after all, but even so, I don't think scientists typically settle disagreements with swords. The carved up Bra wore a brass nose prosthesis for the rest of his life, and he may have had gold and silver ones for special parties, and he would have plenty occasions to use them. Bra threw parties that were the stuff of legend on a private island in his observatory slash castle. At these parties, you might meet his court jester or his prized pet elk, although some say it was a moose. Everybody was probably too drunk to tell, including the elk slash moose, which got drunk on beer one night, fell down a flight of stairs, and died. Talk about a party animal. Also, please don't make your animals party. In the end, Bra's fondness of drink would be his undoing, too. After Frederick II's death, Bra regularly clashed with the new king of Denmark, eventually leaving his island home to party and couch surf nobility style all over Europe. He ended up in Prague for his last few years, in the employ of King Rudolf II, before falling ill at a party and dying 11 days later at the age of 54. One rumor has it that he was poisoned by none other than the King of Denmark, who was enraged that Bra had an affair with his mother. Some even believe the story gave Shakespeare his inspiration for Hamlet. The truth has less political intrigue, but is no less epic. Scientists have exhumed Bra's body twice, and in 2012, the University of Rostock, Bra's alma mater, concluded that there was not enough mercury in Bra's 411-year-old beard to suggest he was poisoned. Instead, Bra, seen here as a heap, may have simply partied too hard. While at a fancy dinner party, he had had a lot to drink. He had to relieve himself, but he didn't want to be rude and excuse himself from the table, so he held it until his bladder burst. The resulting infection was the end of him, though his work would live on. After his death, the question of who would inherit his notes was up in the air, as he had married a commoner and his children were not eligible to receive them. Eventually, the notes were acquired, somewhat dubiously, by his former assistant, German astronomer Johannes Kepler. Thanks in part to Bra's detailed measurements, Kepler showed that the planets moved in elliptical orbits around the sun and established his three laws of planetary motion that we still teach to this day. The history of science is chock full of fascinating people you may have never heard of, like Ada Lovelace. Trace has the story on the first computer geek here. Do you have a favorite scientist you'd like us to profile? We want to do a whole series on them, so let us know in the comments, subscribe for more, and I will see you next time on D News.